Best-selling author and Bainbridge Island resident Susan Wiggs is out with her latest novel, and I'm here to attest that I can literally not put it down. She's the author of over 50 novels, and her newest work, Welcome to Beach Town, has been called compulsively readable. I agree. Like many of her novels, this one was also inspired by real-life events. Welcome, Susan, to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to have a summer book out. Oh my gosh, seriously, yeah. this is perfect for like it's like a vacation on the in beach. A book. Yes. yes. Oh, <laughs> see, you already have your tagline. I literally, I'm almost done, so I don't want you to tell me the ending. No spoilers. No spoilers today. Okay. But for someone that hasn't heard of this book, what's it about? It's a book that takes place on. California's best made up surf beach. And it starts out with a shocking event because it's a Susan Wiggs book. Um, this um, very interesting character named, um, named Nikki gives a commencement speech and she kind of drops a bomb. She goes off script from her prepared speech, drops a bomb and becomes a pariah in her beach town. And so what follows is the saga of her um, fleeing from it and having to come back and deal with things and it's kind of the theme is you never really can outrun your past you have wow. to come back and settle things in a highly entertaining way I hope I yes, hope the book definitely. is just out so uh, and I'm already getting feedback from readers and thank you for saying compulsively readable it is <laughs> I mean I cannot put it down my fiance is like what are you doing the oh, last couple nights not, I wish it was compulsively writable but it was a long slog for me to write that book. It was my first book, though, um, after pandemic, and it was like a breath of fresh air. I was so glad I got to have the surf and the sand and the beaches and that kind of vibe totally. after being locked down for a couple of years. So it's very liberating to be out with a book now. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and it kind of is loosely based on a true story. Can you, can you touch on that? Yeah, not so much based, but I accessed um, one of the precursors to the Murdoch murders, which we've all been so mm -hmm. obsessed with, um, prior to that awful shooting that was just resolved a few months back, yes. um, there were some other tragedies in that community. And one of them involved a group of teenagers who went joyriding in a speedboat at night under a bridge and yes. in you know typical teenage fashion tragedy ensued and so I kind of accessed that mindset that kind of reckless teen mindset to create a really um, awful situation that sort of blew the town apart again and um, hopefully they'll come back together but there's not going to be any spoilers so we'll have to see no spoilers everybody <laughs> okay and like you mentioned this is you know a beach read but meaning I guess that you would consume it right away but there's also a lot of like complex um, themes, I guess, throughout. Can you can you touch on that? There are. It involves not. It, it's really kind of Nikki's journey. She, you know, we meet her as a young girl, and it sort of follows her. It's a coming of age story into the middle of her life and the choices that she makes. And one of the things that probably was my favorite storyline, and I didn't plan it when I was, you know, plotting out the book, was that um, she kind of has this interesting and unique relationship with her father mm -hmm. uh, who's just kind of this surfer dude single dad he raised her in an airstream trailer on the beach right. so the publisher was nice enough to put that <laughs> you know to reference that on the cover and I really enjoyed following their journey and there's also a tribute to my late great older brother who we lost to pancreatic cancer earlier this oh, year so he was a really talented plein air painter um, plein air when they set up their easel outdoors and paint what they see and so there's a there's a storyline in there about that and so I just I had a lot of affection for that amazing yeah. and your process I mean you said it's kind of a, a long daunting process or it, it can is. be sometimes and I, I even I don't want to you know put you on blast right away but I even heard something about a, a freezer so can you walk <laughs> us through your process oh, I, of writing? I, had, I had mentioned to Susie <laughs> earlier um, when I write my first draft, it's in longhand, in oh, handwriting, wow. in a notebook, which means there's no backup copy. <laughs> and so if I haven't typed up my, my draft for a while, and I've got maybe you know, 10, 20, 30,000 words in a notebook, um, I usually stick it in the freezer because oh, if the house gosh. burns down, it's the last <laughs> thing that will freeze. So That's really there you smart. Go. Okay, I love that. <laughs> I don't know about smart, but it works. <laughs> Whatever works for you and you can keep writing books like this, then 
keep doing your process. Oh, thank you. Um, and you've obviously, you know, written so many different books. Do fans now reach out to you and say, can you write about this? I mean, do they give you any ideas or where do all, all these ideas? All the time. Really? All the time. Yes, yes. One of my favorite, and I, I do get people who say, I have this great idea for a book, so I'm going to give you the idea and you write the book and then um, we'll split the money 50-50. <laughs> and so I just say, well, I have a better idea. You write your idea and keep all the money. <laughs> but I love the dialogue with, with readers, librarians, booksellers. I love that because that's been my jam for, what, 50-some books? Absolutely all my life. This incredible. is my 36th year to be a published author. Congratulations. Yes, I was a baby writer way back in the day. And where did that passion come from that you wanted to get into writing? A reading family, I'm sure. Because okay. even before my conscious memory, my mother has saved little scraps of paper. I would scribble and, and dictate stories to her. And so wow. I was one of those. But people come to writing from all ages, you know, when they retire, when they're in school. It doesn't really matter. But I think everybody's a storyteller, but the ones who go home and write it down are the ones who write your summer read. I love it. And you're a local author. I mean, that's just so cool to know somebody that, you know, is Seattle based. And why did you want to do kind of a, a beach read that would transport people maybe to this beach town? Did you have any ideas with um, that? Yeah, I did because the previous book, it was called Sugar and Salt and it, and it involved a lot of food. There was a baker, there was a, there was a barbecue master, and I think I probably gained like five pounds writing that book. <laughs> so I thought, well, I can write about an athlete who, you know, yes. or something like that. So that was one. And then the other thing was um, I heard that they wanted to publish it in June of this year. And I thought, my favorite thing to read at the beach is a beach read. So off I went. I love that. And yeah. I feel like who doesn't just want to, you know, lay at the beach and, and read something like that. And I mean, I'm so excited to finish this book. And now mm. you've kind of told me that the thank end you. could be something spicy. Stay we don't tuned. know. Stay yeah. tuned. Well, thank you so, so much You're for welcome. coming thank in you. and talking to us. We so appreciate it.